Okay, so let's talk about equations and inequalities involving absolute value. This is definitely a topic that I get a lot of questions on. There's a lot of confusion about how to deal with absolute values. So let me give you my take on this. Most people, as long as we know what the absolute value means, right? If I have the absolute value of seven, if what's inside is positive, that's just gonna equal seven. If I took the absolute value of negative seven, absolute value makes that positive, right? So the absolute value takes any number and makes it positive. If it's already positive, then great. If it's a negative number, then it'll turn it into a positive number. So for these types of problems, I use what I call the cover-up method. Okay, you've got a bunch of stuff inside this absolute value. So just cover it up temporarily and then just ask yourself, what numbers could be behind my finger and make that a true equation? Hopefully you can see that three and negative three would be true, right? The absolute value of three and the absolute value of negative three would both equal three. So what that tells me is whatever was behind my finger, which was four X minus five over six could either equal negative three or four X minus five over six could equal positive three. And I can solve those two equations to get me to my answer. So this would give me multiplying by six, four X minus five equals negative 18. Add the five over, that's 23. So X, one answer is 23 fourths. Uh, this, sorry, this should have been negative 13. Oh boy, negative 13. Let's make this negative 13 fourths. Over here, if I multiply by six, now I have four X minus five equals 18. Add the five over that's, now that's 23. So X would be 23 fourths. So we either get negative 13 fourths or 23 fourths. So essentially what I'm saying then is if you see an absolute value, these are the only types of formulas I like to use. If you've got the absolute value of stuff equals a number like three or something like that, then you have two situations. Either the stuff inside the absolute value equals negative three, or your stuff equals positive three. So that's kind of a way to handle these. What about an inequality? So if I have the absolute value of, I'm gonna call it stuff for now, equals, I'm sorry, is less than or equal to five, let's do the same thing. So let's cover that up. Now here you're gonna have a whole bunch of numbers. Let's think positively first. What kinds of numbers could go behind my finger and make that a true inequality? Five certainly works, right? Absolute value of five is equal to five, which means it's less than or equal to five. But what other positive numbers work? Four, three, two, one, zero, right? So essentially what we're saying is, in terms of positive numbers, anything less than or equal to five will work. Now, what about negative numbers? What negative numbers would work? Negative five works, right? The absolute value of that is five. So does negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. So in terms of positive and negative numbers, what numbers work? What, what, what numbers could go behind my finger? Any number that's between five and negative five. And anytime you wanna say between, if you use less than signs and start with the smallest number, this means any, anything between negative five and five will work. So three minus two X divided by negative four is between negative five and five. Okay, we might as well do this. So same idea here. If you've got the absolute value of some stuff is less than or even less than or equal to whichever way, some number, I'll use five since I used it here. What that basically says is what's in your absolute value needs to be a number between five and negative five. That's gonna be your starting point. Now you can break this up into two separate inequalities, but uh, oftentimes you can just do your operations to both of them at the same time. What I mean by that is I wanna get X alone by itself. So how would I do that? I'm gonna to have to start by multiplying everybody through by negative four. 
Now, one of the things with inequalities, if you multiply everybody by negative four, we know that when you have an inequality, if you multiply by a negative number, it is going to change the signs. So this now becomes 20 is greater than or equal to three minus two X greater than or equal to negative 20. We can subtract three from everybody. So then I have 17, let me move this up, is greater than or equal to negative 2x greater than or equal to negative 23. And then I'm going to divide by negative 2. So same deal. If I divide by a negative number, the signs are going to change as well. So then I have negative 17 has less than or equal to x less than or equal to positive 23 halves. And this can be written like this or in interval notation. So in interval notation, we could just say these are the numbers from negative 17 halves to 23 halves, including both of those endpoints. All right, we've done an absolute value with a less than. How about an absolute value with a greater than? So same thing, let's do the cover-up method here. I've got the absolute value of some stuff. So let's think positive numbers. What kind of numbers could work in terms of positive numbers that the absolute value would be greater than four? Well, certainly 4.1 would work, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So anything bigger than four will work as a positive number. What about negative numbers? negative 4.1, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and so forth. So what we're basically saying is what's inside that absolute value is either going to be something greater than 4 or what's inside that absolute value is less than negative 4, right? So then I can just say 1 half x plus 3 over five less than negative four or one half X plus three over five is greater than positive four. So, and this will be true anytime you have an absolute value of some stuff, if it's greater than some number or greater than or equal to, you have two situations here and these can't be combined. Either you're, because these are totally different directions, right? Either your stuff and your absolute value is greater than four or your stuff is less than negative four. You can't put those together. Those are going two different directions on the number line, right? Greater than four, less than negative four. So they have to be separated. So if I multiply by five, I'm gonna have one half X plus three less than negative 20. Subtract the three over, one half X is less than negative 23. Multiply by two, x is less than negative 46, or multiply by five here, one half x plus three is greater than 20, one half x greater than 17, x is greater than 34. So yeah, just to, to see this on a number line, right? Here's negative 46, here's positive 34, these are the numbers that satisfy the inequality. So in interval notation, I could say these are the numbers from negative infinity to negative 46, not including. Remember, or in interval notation is denoted with a U that says union, the numbers from 34 all the way to positive infinity. Okay. Usually a discussion on absolute value, you're asked to think about absolute value and the connection an absolute value can have to describe the distance between two things. So let's talk about that. On a number line, how far is it between the numbers three and eight? I'm sure most of you 
can just see that in your head, but think about what subtraction problem gives you that answer. Certainly eight minus three gives you the correct answer, right? Which is five units. That's how far three and eight are from the number line. What if you did the subtraction backwards, however? If you did three minus eight, that would not give you the correct answer. That would give you negative five, right? So, but if I knew the two numbers and I do the subtraction, one will give me a positive answer, one will give me a negative answer. How will I make sure I get the correct answer no matter which way I do the subtraction is if I threw an absolute value on there, right? The absolute value of eight minus three, which is five is gonna give me five. And even if I did the subtraction in a way that gave me a negative number, as long as I take the absolute value of it, I get the correct answer of five. So when you take, this can describe however, whichever way you do it, the absolute value of the difference of two numbers will tell you how far apart they are, the distance between the two numbers. So I'm gonna put uh, distance between two numbers. You can either you can get it either way, right? It does if you don't know which one's positive, which one's bigger than the other, just subtract them and take the absolute value. It's going to give you the distance. So with that in mind, you can solve some of these questions, uh, equations that we've been solving can be thought of in terms of distance and maybe even solved easier than, than doing it the way we were doing it before. If you think about what this says now, the absolute value of x minus seven is equal to three. This is describing, this is basically saying the distance, distance between x, x is what we're looking for, right? x and seven is three. That's how you could interpret that. So think on a number line, the distance between x and seven is three. So if this was seven, we're looking for x, we're looking for what are the numbers whose distance from seven is three? Well, there's two of them, right? You could go three units this way or three units this way. So you get to 10 here, or you could get to, if you subtract three, this will give you four. So your two answers here are going to be four or 10. Of course, you can do it with the cover-up method. You could say x minus seven is equal to three or x minus seven is equal to negative three, and that will give you the same answer. But if you think of it in terms of distance, you might find that a little bit faster. Now, with distance, it does have to be the absolute value of something minus something. So what about the absolute value of x plus five? Well, I can always think of this as the absolute value of x minus negative five, right? That's the same thing as x plus five, in which case I can now interpret this as the distance between x and negative five. So negative five would be on the number line. And what I'm looking for is all the points whose distance away from five is two. So if I go two units to the right, that'll take me to negative three, two units to the left, that'll take me to negative seven. That's two units. That's two units. So my answer here, just by looking at it graphically, I can see that X would either be negative seven or negative three. You can even, you know, if it's, what if it's something weird like two absolute value of two X minus one is equal to six. You can still interpret that in terms of distance. You would just say, okay, well, I'm looking for all the points whose distance from one is six. So here's one. Uh, six units away from that would take me to either seven or if I subtract six, that's going to take me to negative five. But the difference is this, like back up to this problem, these were your two answers, right? X is either negative three or X is equal to negative seven. The difference here would be, it's not that X equals these two values, that these two values equal two X, right? Two X equals negative five or two X equals seven because it's the distance from two X to one equals six, and this is easy to solve. Two X equals negative five tells me X itself is actually negative five halves. Seven equals two X tells me X itself is actually seven halves. So I can get 
my two answers as well by thinking about distance. For ones that were more involved, like uh, the very first one we did, you know, if when th things start to get really the more involved, I don't usually want to think about those in terms of distance. I just solve those with the cover up method. That's a little bit trickier to think of in terms of distance. But uh, for a simple absolute value equation, that's always an option. And you can solve inequalities involving absolute value by thinking of it in terms of distance as well. What is this saying in terms of distance? This is looking for all the points that are the distance between my numbers I want and eight is less than five. So essentially I'm looking for all points that are closer than five units from eight. All points closer or equal to, right? Closer or equal to five units from eight is another way to think of that. So on a number line, here's eight. What are the points and numbers that are less than five units, less than or equal to? Well, I can go over five units this way. That'll take me to 13. Five units this way will take me to three. And we, it, it can be closer than five units. So we want all of these numbers that are within five units in either direction from eight. So in interval notation, these would be the numbers from three to 13. What about the absolute value of X plus two is greater than seven? If I write that as the absolute value of X minus negative two, like we did on a previous problem, then what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for all the points that are more than seven units away from negative two. So if you went seven units to the right of negative two, that would take you to positive five. Remember, we want more than seven units. So not even five counts, because that is exactly seven units from negative two, but anything bigger than five, right? All of these numbers over here are more than seven units from negative two. And if I go in the negative direction, uh, seven units there would take me to negative nine. If I went further to the left of negative nine, all of these X values are bigger than seven units from negative two. So in interval notation, we would have numbers from negative infinity to negative nine, not including, or numbers from five to infinity. And then finally, um, it's very common for math teachers to kind of trick you, make sure you're paying attention and not uh, just uh, you know on autopilot. Um, whether you're doing distance or you're doing the cover-up method, you know you could certainly do the cover-up method and set up a couple of inequalities here, um, but you have to be on your toes. Think about what this is saying. Maybe maybe think about this from a distance perspective, because the left side is describing the distance from three to x, which is our answer is greater than negative two. Think about that for a second. Or think about it this way. Whatever you take the absolute value of, we know that this absolute value has to come out to be positive, right? Whether you think of it as distance or use absolute value, think of it as it makes everything positive. No matter what you plug in for x and subtract three, even if you get a negative number here, the absolute value is gonna change it to a positive number so what values of x will I, can I plug in and expect this whole thing to come out to be greater than negative two, right? This is negative. You, when you look at it that way, do you see that x can be any number here, right? This works, this is true for all x values. True for all x. So that means x is any number. You could write it as all the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, or you could write it in interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. Conversely, what if we said the absolute value of three x plus four or some junk here is less than or equal to a negative number? And again, we know that this is always supposed to come out to be positive, or at the very least, right, it could come out to be zero, right? If you plug in the right number, this could be zero. But is it ever a chance that this could come out to be less than or equal to a negative number? That's never going to happen, right? This is never true, right? So 
the answer to this one is there is no solution to this one, no solution. Okay, so just make sure you're paying attention uh, with absolute value equations and inequalities so you don't get tricked on one of these two. <clears throat> 